My name is Paul Feldman, and I've just written this new book called Unmasking the State. This is the cover. Most people understand what is meant by the term government, the men and women who are said to govern the country. But in my view, the government is part of a much more significant body, and that's called the state. Governments come and go, but the state itself lives on. It evolves, it adapts to new circumstances, and it changes through the actions of the government. The Chambers Dictionary, for example, defines the state as the political entity of a nation, and it includes the apparatus of government, the civil service, and the armed forces. In Britain, we could extend that a bit to include the monarchy, parliament, the legal system, the judiciary, the secret police like MI5, MI6 and the special branch, the prison system and so on. And today we would have to say that the British state has a relationship, an intimate relationship, with a whole number of bodies outside of Britain. For example, the European Union, the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund. Many of these bodies have power over the British state. For example, the World Trade Organization decides the rules of trade and competition. In the book I've set out to answer a number of questions. For example, what is the relationship between the state and capitalism? How are the powers of the state exercised? Are they held legitimately? Does the state have democratic authority? Is it right or necessary to challenge the state? Other questions include for example, whether the majority are powerless or does the vote give them a certain control over the state? Another question I ask is whether the state is the last word on democracy. My main argument is that the state is a capitalist state. We live in a capitalist society and the institutions of rule are thereby capitalist in their nature and in their outlook. And I try to show this in some detail in the book. This leads us to some interesting challenges, to put it mildly. If, as I argue, the state is capitalist, and if we want to make progress in history, and if we want to move beyond a capitalist form of production, capitalist society, then the question arises, how are we to do this? Can we do this within the present existing state form, the capitalist form. I argue that we can't. So if we want to move towards a not-for-profit economy, a sustainable economy, to enshrine political and democratic rights in a constitution and to develop and extend these rights to include things like control in the workplace, then we have to devise new forms of democratic rule. We have to go beyond the capitalist form of representative democracy where you get a vote every four or five years as to who will rule over you to more direct forms of democracy which will give ordinary people control uh, over their own futures, over their own destinies. This will be done by transferring in particular economic power and economic resources to the majority through control in their workplace, whatever that workplace is, whether it's a, a factory, an office, or a shop, or a school, or a university, or public transport, and so on. So this is the challenge we face. How do we make these changes without changing the state? Uh, I put forward some proposals about a transitional democratic state to replace the existing state. And how this might work in practice. Now if you want to get a copy of this book, which is published by A World to Win, you can go to our website www.aworldtowin.net and you can find the details there. And if you have any comments after you've read the book, I'd be pleased to hear about them.